Hi, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of the new Igniter plugin from Krotos. We all know that authentic vehicle sounds can be some of the most challenging and time-consuming sound effects to capture or create. We made Igniter to allow you to design any type of vehicle quickly and efficiently. Its unique workflow can save you a lot of time, and because it fits seamlessly into your DAW, it can easily be combined with traditional methods. Now you can tweak and perform the response and behavior of a vehicle from a single control, rather than automating layers of tracks and plugins. It also includes hundreds of vehicle recordings out of the box for use inside and outside of the plugin. So let's do this here in Pro Tools. I'm going to create a new track, a new stereo instrument track, and add it to my session. Since Igniter is an instrument, this is how we're going to use the plugin in the session. So on the multi-channel plugin instrument, we'll find Igniter and let's, let's add it and see what it sounds like. So you can hear that Igniter is a vehicle design system. Um, it's extremely dynamic, extremely performable, and a whole new way of doing this type of workflow. So you'll see in the UI that there's, there's a lot of things going on, and let's just step through the different sections of it piece by piece. So on the left-hand side, you'll see these tabs. Now, these flick through the generators, the four different sets of generating systems that are inside unit Igniter. So first of all, we have Granular, um, we have loaded in a Ferrari engine, a Ferrari exhaust, and all the various controls are available here as well. The next tab is Synth, which we're not using in this preset, which we'll revisit later in the video. The next one along is the One Shot, which we are using, and we'll just take a look at this a little bit later as well. And last of all, we have a loop system as well. So all of these generators are, can be layered together in a complex way to create a really complex and interesting designs. Now, this is done using the mod system, which is just above two of these key controls, which we'll take a look at right now. So first of all, we've got the engine start stop button. This mutes and unmutes the processing and the audio from the plugin. On the right, we've got the master revs controller. So even with the plugin off, you'll see that as I'm moving this, a number of parameters are moving inside the UI. I've got the RPM, the shuffle depth, granular, um, mixer level, and much more behind the scenes. So this, this and the mod system are how we use Igniter to its fullest potential. So this is a complex controller that allows you to control many, many parameters all at once in an extremely dynamic and performable workflow. So anything that's hooked up into a mod, anything we see here listed, will be controllable from the master revs controller. Now in the mod system, we've got a number of tabs. So each of these tabs relates to a different mod. Now we have up to eight of these mods at Igniter. So as you can imagine, this is a really, really powerful system for designing complex, performable vehicle behaviors. Um, as I click through, you'll see that each of these has a different curve and a different set of controls that have been added to it. We've also got these little blue areas, which is actually the parameter ranges. So each parameter that you add to a mod in Igniter can have its own range, and this can be adjusted by dragging from the left or the right hand side. So quite quickly, you can start to control really complex things really easily. Any parameter that has a label can be picked up, click and dragged across to the mod system. And as soon as it's dropped in, you'll see it will, be, it will apply to this curve coming marked through the master revs, and we can adjust the parameter ranges as we like, or remove it by clicking the X. There's no limit to the number of parameters that can be added, and you can add as many as you like to each of the mods to create a really powerful system. So below this section, we have a traditional mixer, which allows us to solo or mute any of the individual generators. We also have an FX bus, that can be used to add reverb or additional processing in parallel. To route to this FX bus, you simply use the sends, which are present on each layer. So let's take a quick listen to some of these layers just on their own. That's the granular. Let's take a listen to the one shot. So we'll see that we've just got one sample loaded in here. Let's see what it sounds like. So you notice that this is only being triggered in a certain way at a certain time. This has been very deliberately set up to act just as one piece of a complex piece of behavior. So we'll take another look at, look at this in more detail later in the video. Let's take a listen to the loop system now. So you'll see that the master revs controller is actually moving through the complex set of loops that have been set up here, controlling the speed and the gain of each loop. Again, we'll, re we'll revisit this later, but this gives you just a quick glimpse into the complexity that can be easily achieved using the plugin. So below the mixer, we have the effects rack. 
You can quickly add an effect by clicking on the drop down and selecting an effect from the rest. This will appear and you can use the power button on the left hand side to activate or deactivate any effect in Igniter or use the control on the right hand side to view. Any effect that you click on will appear in the section below. So this allows you quick and easy access to any number of parameters and any number of effects really quickly and really easily. And of course, remember that like anything, any of these parameters can be picked up and dragged into the macro system. Let's take a look at some of Igniter's factory presets. So going up to the top bar, clicking on the preset name, we'll see our factory preset menu come down. So we see we've got a number of categories of different types of presets. Under real world, we have cars and trucks, foley, helicopters, motorbikes and planes. Huge amount of content to get started with. Also some sci-fi presets and some sirens using our synthesis and reverb engines. So under real world and cars and trucks, this is the largest category of presets. So on the core, you obviously see we've got a lot of examples. And under extras, we've got even more using um, setups of pass-bys and other types of special effects per vehicle. So there's a huge, huge amount of uh, presets to get started with. So under core, you'll see that there's typically three different types of setup using the granular engine mainly per vehicle. So let's take a listen to some of these. I'm going to start with the Honda Civic. So this type of preset is the simplest setup using the granular engine. Um, the engine is always on load and is simply hooked up by default to the master res controller. We can also mix between the engine and exhaust really easily using the mix control. So this allows us a lot of different controls over the output of the engine, how it sounds and how it feels. So taking this a step further, we'll notice that there's a manual to auto switch in the granular tab here. So when I switch this to auto, uh, the manual controls for load and RPM will now be grayed out. And these will be automatically controlled from the power slider here, where we can accelerate and brake automatically. So this makes use of the auto gearbox configurations which are pre-baked into the setups for each vehicle in Igniter. So let's take a listen to this and see how it feels. So using the power slider, we can just simply accelerate or brake or coast by leaving it in the middle and having RPM and load controls automatically controlled from the pre-baked gearboxes. Now, perhaps you'd like to take this a little bit further and control the gearbox manually. So we also have another way of doing this using another different type of preset. So let's take a look at one of these. So in the manual gears preset here, which is the case for all the vehicles that use the granular engine, we've used the mod system to create rises and falls in RPM and in load. Now, because of the mod system's unique makeup, we can actually see how these align so that we can get the feel of the engine just right. These are completely customizable because they use the mod system. So you can adjust the length, the depth, the duration, and the number of gear, gear changes that, that you like. This can all be done really quickly and really easily. So let's take another use of this. Uh, which is using automation. So I've already set up and drawn in a, um, a curve here using the master RPM parameter. And if I turn on the automation, let's hear what this sounds like. So you can see here's another way of using the preset vehicles in Igniter. Let's take a listen to some other preset examples and see how these can be triggered. So in our in-car Foley example, 
the only content that's loaded is actually in the one shot tab. These one shots are triggered from the master rev controllers like all the other parameters in Igniter. So when you load the preset, there will be no audio and these will need to be triggered by a movement of the master rev controller. So let's give that a go. So you notice that each of these was triggered as I moved past them in the upwards direction. This final point was triggered and then was looping and then it was stopped as I passed the stop point. Now, as I move back downwards again, you'll notice that none of these points actually trigger because each of these triggers triggers in a certain direction. So for instance, as I add a point, it will always be in the upwards direction. If I click again, it will trigger in the downwards direction. If I click one more time, it will be bi-directional, so in either direction, and click one more time, it will stop. These trigger point modes will continue to, to cycle as I click on them until I right click, which will remove the point. So another type of preset that we have will be, for instance, a helicopter, helicopter example. So this will behave slightly differently, more like a traditional engine, but it's driven entirely from the loop engine. If I try a different helicopter example, you'll hear that there is almost no output on, on, on preset load. This is because it's a pass by and it's extremely dynamic. So as I move the revs controller, we'll see the position of the Doppler move and we'll hear the vehicle move. Because these types of presets are completely performable in Igniter, they may sound slightly different depending on how fast you move or automate the master revs controller. Okay, let's build up a design from scratch. Let's jump from our default preset to our clean start preset. So you'll see here that all these tabs are in fact empty. There's no content loaded in, so we can just start completely from scratch. So let's start by adding some content to the granular engine. I'm gonna use the tags in the file browser to filter just for granular content only. So once this is done, I can then filter again by engine type. So for instance, V6, V8, or sports. So now let's drag and drop from the file browser directly into the granular tab. You'll see that as we've selected uh, some content that can be used by the granular engine, you'll see a white box appear around this drag and drop target. Now let's add the exhaust. Great. Okay, so let's add something preemptively to the one shot tab. So let's use the browser again and the search function to find us some skids. So we can also preview when the plugin is active by simply clicking on any of these audio files. By clicking again, once the sample is playing back, it'll stop the playback. So let's drag and drop one of these and one of these other skids into the OneShot browser. We can also change the selected area of the sample, change speed or gain from the knobs, or switch to an amplitude envelope. Let's have a quick preview of these sounds. I'm gonna shorten that one a little bit. And let's place some triggers. One in the upwards direction and one in the downwards direction. Okay, let's layer this all together. So let's make this design a little more sci-fi. Let's add in some synths, this layers. So in the synth tab, just by clicking on, I activate each oscillator. I can adjust the frequency, or the blend, into a different waveform. So let's add the frequency to another mod. And let's add another oscillator as well and use a square wave. And also I'm gonna add the, the blend between these different waveforms at the same time. So let's hear both these together now. Let's add some amplitude modulation to add a classic pulsing effect. So I can adjust the values by hand or by clicking in the center and typing. 
So let's add the AM frequency variables as well and adjust these so we get a nice pulse as this curve rises. Okay, so it's starting to come together now. So let's lower these frequencies a little bit to make it sound a little bit more muscular. Let's add a little flanger to the master to make the sound a little bit more sci-fi. Now let's lay out all these elements together. Let's use the effects bus to add a little reverb to this design. So when the convolution reverb is active, I'm going to navigate to the IRs using the tags and I drag and drop a reverb over to this side. I'll just use the send controls to just send a little bit of synth and granular into this reverb and adjust the master output. Okay, so now we've got something that's sounding quite nice. We're going to use the multi-channel out from the plugin to export these channels individually for mixing in Pro Tools. So I've set up five new stereo tracks. I'm going to adjust the input of each of these tracks to accept from a different stereo output from the plugin. So granular for the first, synth for the second, one shot for the third, I'll set up for loops, and also for the effects bus. Let's arm all these tracks. And let's do a take. So you'll see that each of these stereo pairs has been outputted to its individual track, which makes it very easy to mix within Pro Tools itself or to an out output to external hardware. Let's take a closer look at the loop system now. So from the clean start preset where no content has been imported, let's build up a loop system for the Booker aeroplane. So I'm going to take an idle loop, drag it into the first section. I'm going to add loop three and loop five to the next section of loop engines. So once these areas have been selected, we can then move between these loops smoothly using the automatic um, amplitude and pitch envelopes. So from the UI now we can adjust the crossfade between each loop, the central duration, and how long each loop is in relation to the next. You can simply click on the next loop to adjust these points, or use the buttons on the left hand side to jump between loops. Now once we're happy with the amplitude transitions, we can flip the switch to look at pitch transitions. Now typically for this type of content, you'd see a slight pitch rise across each loop so that they gel a little nicer together. So we can quickly jump between each loop and adjust the pitch curve so that we get this type of result. Okay, so that's sounding quite nice already. So let's add a little bit of movement into this design by adding the Doppler. And let's now assign this to a mod. So we can feel this plane moving past us as we go. So what we can also do is adjust the range of the loop position so they're only hearing certain areas of the loop system. This can help shape the response and feel of the design.
and can be done very quickly and very easily. Thanks for watching. I hope you join us next time. Thank <laughs> you.